स्वागत ध्यान श्लोक शुक्लांबरधर विष्णु शशिवर्ण चतुर्भुज प्रसन्न वदनम ध्यानोपात वागीशात्मन सह सर्वाथनापक्रमे यम नृतकृत्या स्यु तम नमा गजानन दौर्भिता चतुर्फटिकमणिमयी अक्षमाला हस्ते नैक पद्म सीतमी चुक पुस्तक चापरेण भाषा कुंदेन्दुशंकटिकमणि निभावादेवतीय निवसत वदने सर्वदा सुप्रसन्ना पूजत राम रामेति मधुर मधुराक्षर आरुह्य कविता शाखा वंदे वाकिकोकिल वाकर्मुनिंह से कविता वनचारिण शृण्वन राम कथाद को नाति परा गति यिबं सतत रामचरितामृत सागर अतृतस्त मुनि वंदे प्राचेत समकलमशीतवाशि मशकीकृतराक्षसमायण महामाला रन वंदे नीलात्मज अंजनानंदन वीर जानकी शोकनाशनम कपीशमक्षता वंदे लंका भयंकर उल्लंघ्य सिंधो सलील सलील यशोकवन्यम जनकात्मजाया ददाहंका नमा तम प्राजलिराजनेय आंजनेयमतिटलानन कांचनाद्रिकमनीय विग्रह पारिजातरुमूलवासीन भावयाम पवमानंदनम यघुनाथ कीर्तन त्र त्रतमस्तकांजलि बाष्पवारी परिपूर्णलोचन मारुति नमतराक्षसातक मनोजव मतुल्य वेगम जितेन्द्रिय बुद्धिमतांबरिष्ठम वातात्मज वानर यूथ मुख्यम श्रीराम दूत शिसा नमा यणाजलि संपुटरहर सम्यक् पिबरा वाकर्वदनारविंद कलिताख्यम मधु जन्म व्याचरा विपत्ति मरण्यंत सोपद्रव संसार स विहाय गच्छति विष्णोपद शाश्वत तदुपगत सस संधियोगम समधुरोपनताक्यबद्धम रघुवर चरित मुनि प्रणीत दश शिशम निशाम यम वाकिरीसूता राम सागर कामिनी पुना तो भुवन पुण्या रायण महानदी श्लोक सार सकीर्ण सर्गकल्लोल संकुम कांडग्राह महामीन वंदे रायणारणव वेद वेदे परे पुंसी जाते दशरथात्मजे वेद प्राचेत सादासी साक्षात्मात्म वै दे सहित सुरद्रुमदुले हई मे महामंडपे मध्य पुष्पकसने मणिमे वीरासने सुस्थित अग्रे वाचयति प्रभंजन सुते तत्व मुनिभ्य परम व्याख्यांथम भरतादि परवृत राम भजे श्यामल वामे भूमि सुता पुरा हनुमा पश्चात सुमित्रा सुता शत्रुघ्नो भरत पार्श्वल वायवादिकोणेशु सुग्रीवश्च विभीषण युवरा तारा सुतो जांबवा मध्य नील सरोज कोमल ऋचि राम भजे श्यामल नमोस्तु राय स लक्ष्मणय दनकात्मजाय नमोस्तु रुद्रेन्द्रयमेभ्यो नमोस्तु चंद्रार्कमेभ्य 
सर्वारिष्ट निवारक शुभक पिंगाक्षमक्षापहम सीतान्वेषण तत्पर कपिवर कोटींदु सूर्य प्रभम लंका दीप भयंकर सकलद सुग्रीव सम्मादि समस्त देव विनुत काकुत्स्थ दूत भजे हरि ओम वेलकम टू थिंक दिस इज दि सेशन फिफ्थ सेशन ऑफ our sundara kandam classes so we are still in the first shloka so we have just finished seeing the meaning of the first shloka mm. so we will chant it together tato ravana nitaya sitaya shatru karshanah kiyesh padam anveshtum charana charite pathi so we had finished seeing the meaning of this shloka and uh, we had also analyzed in detail the significance and the symbolism behind this particular shloka there were two things that were left out which actually were discussed at the end of the previous session um, after we closed this session there were a couple of questions asked therefore i felt i must clarify is sita representative of any jeevatma or any particular kind of jeevatma was the question Okay, so what do you all think? Does anyone want to volunteer an answer? Is there a particular kind of jivatma that we are referring to here? What should be the level? Does anyone want to try? Ha, huh, Rachna ji, please answer. Mumukshu, ma'am. Ah, huh? sorry. Ah, uh, Mumukshu, one. Ah. Correct. Seeking moksha. One seeking moksha because she is. she wants to be free from ravana's grasp she is eagerly waiting for rama to come and save her so every second of the time that she is spending in ashoka vana she is yearning for the lord this yearning for bhagavan is called mumukshutva okay the desire to be free from the binding ties of samsara and to attain bhagavan is mumukshutva this is the quality that she symbolizes In this context, I will quote the very first shloka of the Ramayana itself, which forms the first shloka of Sankshep Ramayana. Tapaswadhyayaniratam tapasvi vakvidam param naratam paripak prachha halmi kipmoni pungavam. This is the first shloka of Ramayana. What does it mean? Tapaswadhyayaniratam tapasvi tapasvi refers to. Valmiki. Here, Valmiki is the Sishya asking the Guru Narada. In the second session, I had explained, no, who asked whom, right? Who was asked? Narada was asked by whom? Valmiki. So, what is the quality of Valmiki, the Sishya? He is a Tapasvi. He is an ascetic. What is the meaning of Tapasya? One who is fully self-controlled. Okay, one whose mind does not get distracted by the various objects of sensory pleasures, but looks inward. Okay, that kind of a mind. the shishya has so here the jeevatma is the shishya who is waiting for the guru who is the guru in this uh, symbolism analogy who can tell me who is the guru we discussed last class no hanuman madam ah hanuman so hanuman is the guru what are his qualities tapasvadhyaya niratam vagvidambaram okay munihi these are all the qualities tapasvadhyaya niratam he is also engaged constantly in tapasya guru is also looking inwards guru is not looking for what will i get from the shishya guru's objective is not to get anything from the shishya the guru's objective is to give to the shishya swadhyaya niratam he is constantly engaged in learning contemplation and teaching these are the qualities of a guru the guru should not make up his own knowledge the guru should learn analyze internalize and teach okay so guru is such a person swadhyaya nirataha one who is constantly engaged in learning then munihi one who is um, constantly again constantly looking inward okay and not looking outward this is a muni we had discussed the definition of muni in a detailed way in subramanya bhajanam classes long ago those of you who had attended would remember so vagvidambaram it is not enough just to be a just to have knowledge the guru must also have the ability to express the knowledge to the seeker so vagavidam varam means one who is excellent at communication so all these are therefore here interpreted as the qualities of hanuman extrapolated as the qualities of hanuman 
Okay, so from the very first shloka, we can take an indicator as to what should be the qualities of the Guru and what should be the qualities of the Jivatma who is seeking knowledge. Okay, so if there are any um, further questions in this, I will take it. Otherwise, we move on to the second shloka. Uh, Ma yeah. Before that, ha, yeah, tell me. Ma'am, can you explain that Vagvidam Varam once again? Ah, Vagvidam Varam means among those who speak very well, he is among the best. Okay, so he is one of those people who have an excellent ability to speak. If you can't speak well, how can you transmit the knowledge that you have? Problem, right? If you just know everything and if uh, the Guru asks, if the Sishya asks you something, everybody cannot be Dakshinamurti because every Sishya cannot be the Sanakadi, uh, bro the Sanakadi uh, brothers, right? So because the Rishi uh, who are learning were the, of the level of Sanaka, Sanandana, etc., Dakshinamurti could afford to remain silent, just show Chin Mudra and the Sishya got the knowledge. But here, in today's loka, everybody needs the knowledge to be given in a nice silver plate, preferably with a nice spoon, so that you can just directly take and spoon feed yourself. Right? So the guru must have the ability to teach properly, explain properly. Artiji, did you have a question? Ma'am, here in the Sundarakanda section, Sita is representative of a mumukshu, ma'am. And what <laughs> have what? Yeah, but when she uh, when she's drawn by the golden deer at that time, what does she represent, ma'am? Any normal uh, person who is after uh, drawn due to the sensory organs, we are drawn towards the external world. Exactly. That you see, the whole Rama, you know, takes us through that entire symbolism. When she is chasing the, when she wants Rama to chase the golden deer, what is she doing? She is going after sensory objects. The moment you chase sensory objects, you will be caught by Ravana, Aviveka, and bound in samsara. So, classic textbook case of progression. Correct? Starting from being drawn towards the sensory objects and finally getting trapped and finally getting free through Guru's Kataksha. Everyone has that whole learning cycle and growth cycle. She symbolizes the classic Jeevatma. Okay. And obviously, you can't discount that. Sita Mata out of great compassion for us and Lord Rama out of great compassion for us chose to enact these rules. One cannot take away from the fact that she is Saksha Mahalakshmi. She is goddess. She is the supreme being. She is playing this role here for our benefit so that we will learn. Okay, so we should never confine her to just the definition of Jeevatma. We just take it that in this role, this is what she represents. Right. Uh, Raji ji, do you have a question? Yes, ma'am. The last uh, point I want to mention because she is the goddess, no, ma'am. So she uh -huh. has taken the avatar uh, of uh, uh, Sita Devi. So that point only I just want to ask. So how can we are just treating? I mean, for the say for the sake uh -huh. of mankind, she's behaving like Jivatma, no, ma'am. But she is the goddess, right, ma'am? She is the goddess. It is Leela. Yeah, the entire avatar. Yes, of Lord the Vishnu and God of Mahalakshmi, every avatar is a leela. Every avatar has big, very valid, useful lessons for all of us, right? But in this particular phrase, if somebody else who has your video on un audio or on mute, please mute yourself because it's one's scraping noise that is constantly coming. Able to identify who's that person. Uh, if anyone else can also tell me who is making that noise, it will be really useful. Okay. I think it is Anjana ji. Anjana please ji, mute yourself. I can't see Anjana ji on my screen. Yes, I am there. I have unmuted it, ma'am. Please mute yourself, no? In class, oh, because what happened? Okay. Yes, please be on mute only. Huh? Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank okay. you so much. Sure. Okay, sure, sure. Thank you. Right. So now, did I? Yeah. Okay. So where was I? Ha. Raji ji, to answer your question, she is para. She is the para para Brahman only. Sakshat Mahalakshmi only. It is a Leela avatar, just like uh, Lord Rama is playing with us in the form of a human being. Lord Krishna plays with us as a cowherd boy. She is playing with us as Sita Devi. And what is the purpose of playing with us? To teach us this valuable lesson, not just to play with us, right? Okay, so any other, if there are no further questions, shall we move forward? Okay, so we will learn the second shloka now. One at a time. Give me one minute, I'll open my text rooms. Dushkaram nishpratidvandvam Dushkaram nishpratidvandvam Chikirshan karma vanaraha Chikirshan karma vanaraha 
समुदग्र शिरो ग्रीवो समुदग्र शिरो ग्रीवो कवाम पतिरिवा पभौ कवाम पतिरिवा पभौ लाइन बाय लाइन दुष्करम निष्प्रति द्वंद्वम चिकीर्षन कर्मवानरा दुष्करम निष्प्रति द्वंद्वम चिकीर्षन कर्मवानरा समुदग्रशिरो ग्रीवो गवाम पतिरिवा पभौ समुदग्रशिरो ग्रीवो गवाम पतिरिवा पभौ any doubts in the chanting please ask we we'll chanted together please use the raise hand option then you will come to the top of my screen otherwise i won't be able to see all of you i can only see five or six at a time i hope you are all following okay we'll chant it together then okay one minute dushkaram nishprati dwandvam chikirshan karma vanarah samudagrashiro grivo gavam patirivabhav okay shloka is fine everyone got it great once more we'll chant and see the meaning dushkaram nishprati dwandvam chikishan karma vanarah samudagrashiro grivo gavam patirivabhav no meaning here he is referred now last shloka what was he referred shatrukarshana destroyer of enemies here valmiki names him as vanaraha okay so vanaraha who is vanaraha hanuman dushkaram nishpratidvandvam karma chikirshan chikirshan means he desired litlakara in ramayana those of you who know sanskrit or who are studying sanskrit you will find a large amount of litlakara usage in sanskrit litlakara means what very long ago it happened so long ago that neither the speaker nor the listener were alive in the past to have cognized its uh, cognized the action so chikirshan means he desired something what did he desire he desired dushkaram dushkaram nishpratidvandvam karma chikirshan dushkaram means something which is extremely formidable very difficult to perform okay and nishpratidvandvam pratidvandvah refers to a competitor competition competitor pratidvandvah competitor nishpratidvandvam without any competition what does that mean that karma or that action next word is karma so all the other two words dushkarma and nishpratidvandvam are adjectives for karma okay so this vanara this hanuman desired to perform an action karma what kind of action very difficult action dushkaram nishprati dwandvam something for, for which there was no competitor so nobody else could do it you all know the story when uh, the plan was made to look for sita in lanka each vanara estimated the distance it could jump or he or she could he could jump but one who came closest to hanuman was angada who said he could jump 100 yojanas but he could, was not confident of coming back okay so truly this act had no competitor truly there was nobody else who could substitute hanuman in this act so the this vanara or hanuman desires to do such an act so what happened to him some chikishan samudagra shiro grivaha gavam patihi iva babhau samudagra shiro grivaha what does that mean samud samud agra shiro grivaha shiraha head grivaha neck okay agra forward samud lifted so what did he do he raised his neck and moved his head and shoulders forward okay what was that signifying it was signifying an aggression in him or a this is a positive kind of aggression not a negative kind of aggression okay take it as a positive statement that yes i am going to accomplish this and therefore what did he do he pushed his neck and head forward how did he therefore look eva bhava it says no it means like that he appeared like that whom did he appear like he looked like a gavam pati he gavam pati he means like a bull okay now you may ask me why does a monkey why is a monkey being compared to a bull okay usually we find in sanskrit literature and when there are comparisons made narapungavaha 
okay which means essentially one who is like a bull a man who is like a bull or like a tiger so these are the usual comparisons to show uh to show what do you call it? to show not exactly aggression but to show a resolution a determination to act okay so that is why he looked like this so the summary meaning is as follows hanuman desirous of performing a formidable task which no one else could perform jetted out his head and shoulders and appeared like a bull okay meaning clear may I move forward okay ha rachna ji please ask me uh, ma'am samudagra uh, yeah. what is the meaning you said sam means well agra means front shiro samud means sorry samud means raised agra means front shiro griva shira um the head grivaha neck so he jutted out his neck and neck and head in a um, attempt to show his resolution see when you want to do something your head will raise up and you square your shoulders and you jut out your self no that kind of movement he made okay sudha ji same question one no, different uh, mam uh, riva babhau mean gavam patihi eva a babhau okay like uh, eva means like gavam patihi means rishabha or a bull a babhau means appeared this uh, babhau na uh, babhau comes from bha dhatu i'll not repeat this because babhau keeps coming in this sarga babhau comes from bha dhatu bha means to shine babhau you can say he shone or he appeared both meanings are valid for babhau wherever you see babhau you can take as he appeared he shone but he shone seems very nice because hanuman is always shining no he is he is the hero he looks amazing so valmiki is use of the very word he could have said so many words to say he appeared he could have used so many words to say he appeared instead he uses a word like babhau to show that he shone he was resplendent okay so we'll move to the next shloka i hope the meaning is clear so far Mm-hmm. and everyone's following mm-hmm. ha two okay who are the people who have raised your hands arjuni ji please ask ma'am please repeat the meaning ma'am ha the okay the for okay the for okay hanuman who was desirous of performing the formidable task for which there was no other competitor what is the task of crossing the ocean okay raised his head and shoulders in resolution thereby appearing like a bull thereby appearing like a bull okay so i'm moving forward there are no further questions okay let's see the third shloka atha vaidurya varneshu atha vaidurya varneshu शाद्वलेशु महाबल शाद्वलेशु महाबल धीर सलील कल्पेशु धीर सलील कल्पेशु विचचार यथा सुखम विचचार यथा सुखम लाइन बाय लाइन अथ वैडूर्य वर्णेशु शाद्वलेशु महाबल अथ वैडूर्य वर्णेशु शाद्वलेशु महाबल धीर सलील कल्पेशु विचचार यथा सुखम धीर सलील कल्पेशु विचचार यथा सुखम टुगेदर अथ वैडूर्य वर्णेशु शाद्वलेशु महाबल धीर सलील कल्पेशु इतचार यथा सुखम आई एम नॉट एबल टू आइडेंटिफाई द वन हु इज ऑन व्यू देन आई हैव टू रिक्वेस्ट अंजना जी चेक योर ऑडियो आई होप यू आर म्यूट ओके मैम प्लीज बी ऑन म्यूट यस मैम थैंक यू सो मच अगेन विल चाइल्ड अथ वैडूर्य वर्णेशु शाद्वलेशु महाबल धीर सलील कल्पेशु विचचार यथा सुखम मीनिंग 
Okay. Athat, Mahabalaha. Now the word for Harman is Mahabalaha. He is now resolved to act. No. So he looks like Mahabalaha, one with extraordinary strength. Okay. Here the commentator, uh, the commentator, uh, let me just go back and see the source also correctly. In the commentary by Shiromani, okay. Uh, in the commentary of Shiromani, there is a reference that this Mahabala strength does not only refer to physical strength, but it also refers to mental strength and intelligence. Because to do a task like this, it is not just enough to be physically strong. You also have to have great mental strength. Again, life lessons. Sansundara Kanan teaches us many life lessons. I keep telling, no, one life lesson directly to perform it. What did we learn in the previous class? Before performing any act, we should mentally plan out the act. From this, we learn that to accomplish a difficult act, when we resolve to do something, not only should it be backed by physical strength, but we should also have the willpower to do the activity in a very intelligent and correct way. That is what is referred here by the use of the word Mahabalaha, says the Bhashikara. Okay, so Mahabalaha, Dheeraha, again one more adjective for him, Dheeraha means a valorous one. Okay, the one with, one Dheeraha can also be interpreted as one with Dhe, one with intelligence. Okay, it also means the one who is valorous, the one who is intelligent. Uh, just one second, I have to take this call. It's a little urgent. Sorry. Okay, so dhiraha is the next is the next word for Hanuman. Vaidurya Varneshu, Salita Kalpeshu, Sadhvaleshu. All these, as you can notice by the ending of Shu Shu Shu, you must have realized this in Saptami Vibhakti Bahu Achalam. Okay, but they are all related words. Okay, Shadhvala refers to green grassy lands. Near the ocean, how will the place be? The place will be a little mossy sometimes, right? So this place looked a little mossy and green. And Salita Kalpeshu. Salita Kalpeshu means, see, you can't make out whether it is land or water. It looks like water. But it is actually land. Sea has come in. The place is flooded. But still you can walk on that land. So it is called something that looks like salila. Something that looks like water. What those green grassy lands. Shadvala, shadvala, ha, look like salila kalpa. Look like uh, water. Salila kalpa look like water. Vaidurya Varneshu. What was the color? Vaidurya. Does anybody know? What does Vaidurya refer to? Those of you who know gemstones. Emeralds, ma'am. Emerald. Emeralds. Ah, green. Actually, from all the uh, commentaries as well as the dictionary, Vaidurya is uh, defined as a cat's eye, brownish golden color, cat's eye. I think Marakatha is emerald, if I'm not wrong. Uh, from what I've seen, no, um, of the Navaratha names, Marakatha refers to emerald, Vaidurya refers to the cat's eye stone, that brownish green color stone, na? that is called Vaidurya. So, Vaidurya Varaneshu means in the color of that brownish gold. Now, see, look at, again, Valmiki's um, poetry is going to be amazing throughout Sundrakanda. But here he begins. He say, how he describes the uh, gr green grassy lands looking like cat's eye. So, glowing brownish green and appearing like water. But actually, it is land. So, in this place, that is why Sattvi Vibhakti. So, in the, in the, on these green grassy lands, which appeared like cat's eye, what did Haruman do? Yathasukam Vichachara. Asukam Vitachara mean as he pleased, he roamed. Okay, so see now he is ready to act. When you are ready to act and you are full of energy, what do you do? You take a few minutes to regroup and to think it over and to, I don't know if all of you do it, but when you have some plan in mind, sometimes you can't sit in one place. You'll be walking up and down the room 10,000 times thinking through your plan and saying, oh, this is what I'm going to do. This is what I'm going to do. When you're obsessed by some idea also, you'll do it. I find myself sometimes very, I mean, sometimes doing such things. When, you know, I'm thinking about something, I'll be walking up and down, up and down, up and down. Now, when I saw this in Ramayana, I was like, okay, Hanuman did this. What did he do? He was now pleased that he is going to cross the ocean, but he does not immediately jump on top of the mountain and take a leap. He raises his head up, starts to show his resolution, and then he walks up and down, up and down, exhausting a little bit of his energy in thinking probably and grouping, regrouping, we say, no, and in preparing for the act. Okay, is it clear? This is the meaning. Summary meaning. Uh, Lord Hanuman uh, roamed around the green grassy, the green grassy marshlands or the wetlands near the sea, which were the color of Vaiduria. That's it. 
Next end, next uh, shloka. I'm moving forward. Unless there are any questions, in which case, please raise your hand. Ma'am, uh, just a second, ma'am. After the other one, I'm going to go to the front. Your voice is completely breaking, Ashutka ji. Your voice is completely breaking. I have to understand. Your voice completely broke. I was not able to... Is it like a continuation from the previous shloka, ma'am? No. Yeah, obviously. Okay. Atha means then. I was not able to hear you. I'm sorry. But for what you're asking, Atha means then, thereafter. Okay. Atha is also Mangala Artha. Atha is always Mangala Artha. We say Atha, Atha, To, Brahma, Jik, Gyasa, we start Brahma Sutra. Okay. So, Atha is essentially Mangala Artha. He decided to act. He's acting. Anjana Ji, question? You're on mute now. What is Mahabalaha, ma'am? Mahabalaha, one with immense strength. Sorry, ma'am? One with immense strength. Okay, okay, ma'am. Thank you. Yeah, please be on mute. Ah, okay. Uh, Swati ji? Ma'am, Vichachara. Roamed. Roamed. Okay. okay, thank you. For uh, every verb, no, I'll give the basic meaning, but I'll not go into the verb construction. It's uh, like mostly it's litlakara only, it's in past tense only, which is why I'm giving you the correct translation, roamed. Okay, if there are no further questions, I'll... You, whoever raises your hand also, please lower your hand immediately so that uh, you don't again come in my radar. Okay, so next shloka, we will move on to... Uh, I think by mistake, you raised your hand up. Okay, wait. Anjanaji, further question? Okay. Dvijan Vitra Sayan Dhiman Dvijan Vitra Sayan Dhiman Urasa Pada Panharan Urasa Pada Panharan Mrikanscha Subahoon Sorry, it is engraved. Mrikanscha Subahoon Nignan Mrikanscha Subahoon Nignan Pravridha Iva Kesari Pravridha Iva Kesari Dvijan Vitra Sayan Dhiman Urasa Pada Panharan Dvijan Vitra Sayan Dhiman Urasa Pada Panharan Mrikanscha Subahun Nignan Pravridha Iva Kesari Mrikanscha Subahun Nignan Pravridha Iva Kesari Sub Subahun Nignan. Two times Dakara is coming. Please note, okay? Again, should we chant the whole shloka together if there are no doubts? Anjana ji, why is your hand raised? Please unmute. Anjana ji, please unmute. Anjana ji, please unmute. Yeah, it is not going. I'm trying to. Uh, yeah, no move. problem. No problem. I'll handle it. Okay. That is why, yeah. Oh, no issues. No Sorry, issues. Please yeah. you. Thank you. Okay. Right. We'll chant the whole shloka together. Dvijan Vitra Sayan Dhiman Urasa Pada Panharan Mrikanscha Subahun Nignan Pravridha Iva Kesari. Once more. Dvijan Vitra Sayan Dhiman Urasa Pada Panharan Mrikanscha Subahun Nikhnan Pravridha Iva Kesari Dvijan Vitrasayan. So who now he is referred here is Dhiman. Again, Dhiman, one with Dhi, the intelligent one. Okay, Dhiman, one with intelligence. Dvijan Vitrasayan. Vitrasayan means scaring away. Okay, he was scaring away. Dvijan. Dvijaha. Dvijaha refers to what? Does anybody know? Anyone wants to volunteer? What does Dvija refer to? Birds, ma'am. Mm, excellent. If you're seeing from the English translation and telling me birds, next question. Illa, ma'am. I heard land, it in land, some land. commentary, ma'am. Ah, very good. <laughs> very good. Because now, they're born you... twice, no? Because from the egg. Yes. Yeah. Once the egg is born, then they are hatched from the egg and therefore they are known as Dvija. So Dvija is not only a name for Brahmins or even for that matter, Kshatriyas and Vaishyas who, ha who have the Upanayana ceremony done. But Dvija also refers to birds. Okay. Dvijan 
means birds were scared away. So scaring away birds. Dhiman. So Dhiman, Dvijan Vitrasayan. What else did he do? Urasa Padapan Haran. Urasa. Uras refers to his chest. With his chest, Padapan Haran. He uh, cut down trees or he um, uprooted trees. Okay. He uprooted trees with his chest. And then Mriganscha Subahun Nignan. Subahun Mrigan Nignan. By trampling over many animals. Pravridha Iva Kesari. He appeared like a Pravridha Kesari Iva. Drishyate. So like that he appeared. Um, he appeared like a fully grown lion. Okay. So uh, this is a description of how Hanuman walked across the marshy lands. When he walked across the marshy lands, he scared away many birds. He trampled over some small animals and he uprooted trees with his chest, thereby appearing like a fully grown lion. This is how a lion is said to walk in the jungle. When the lion walks, birds get scared away, animals are trampled, trees also get brushed on in aggression by the lion that is walking. In the same way, Hanuman is walking. Okay? Fine. Meaning clear? Any questions? Any other questions? Any questions? Okay, so we'll move forward. Aha, Sivagamiji. What is Subhan Nignan? Subahun Nignan. Many Subahun refers to Mrigaha. Mrigan. Subahun, many animals, Nignan, trampling over. Okay. Okay, thank you. Okay, if there are no further questions, we'll move on to the next look. Now, these two shlokas, we will, three shlokas, we can take it together. Five, six, and seven to explain the meaning. This is a description of the mountain now. Because he's now going to climb over the mountain and he's now going to uh, grow large in size and then he's going to leap over the mountain. So, the mountain is being described in five, six, and seven. We will take five, six, seven, and five, six, and seven together. Actually, it's a uh, samastapada. We don't break it. Whole sentence will be told. Now, for teaching, I'm breaking. Swabhava vihitai shchitrai. I corrected that in the other one and not in this. Please delete the ra. Okay, in the screen it is wrongly put. In your text you see what is there. Only swabhava will be there. Swabhava vihitai shchitrai. Swabhava vihitai shchitrai. Dhatu bhissamalankritam. Dhatu bhissamalankritam. Neelalohitam anjishtha. Patravarnai sita sitaihi Neela lohita manjish Patravarnai sita sitaihi Swabhava vihitais chitraihi Tatu bisamalankritam Swabhava vihitais chitraihi Tatu bisamalankritam Everyone following? Do you have any questions? I am seeing your faces on video, so do nod. I'm happy to see you nod. That way I know. Or raise your hands or, you know, or put up thumbs up or whatever. KG, Gupta ji, are you following? Great. Okay. Because I have not heard. Vaishali ji, are you following? Okay. Fine. So we'll um, chant the whole shloka together. Neela lohita manjishtha. Patravar nai sita sitaihi Swabhava vihitai shchitraihi Dhatu bhissamalankritam Once more. Neela lohita manjishtha Patravar nai sita sitaihi Swabhava vihitai shchitraihi Dhatu bhissamalankritam Next shloka. Two more shlokas. We'll learn and see the meaning. Kama rupi bhiravishtam Kama rupi bhiravishtam abhikshnam saparichadaihi. Please break it there. Abhikshnam saparichadaihi. Okay. Kama rupi bhiravishtam 
ಕಾಮೀಕ್ಷಿರಾಷ್ಟ ಅಭೀಕ್ಷಿಂದರ್ವೈಕಿಂದರ್ವೈಕಲ್ಪೈಶ್ಚನ್ನಗೈಕ್ಷಿಂದರ್ವೈಕಲ್ಪೈಶ
நம்மாழ்வார் ஓகே இட்ஸ் அ பியூட்டிஃபுல் நம்மாழ்வார் பாசுரம் ஆன் திருக்குறள் திருக்குறளுடைய பெருமாள் நம்மாழ்வார் ஸ்பெஷாலிட்டி இஸ் நம்மாழ்வார் டி நாட் ஹேவ் டு டேக் அ கார் பஸ் ஏரோப்ளேன் ட்ரெயின் எனி திங் டு கோ டு திவ்ய தேசம் திவ்ய தேசம் உட் கம் டு ஹிம் ஹி உட் பி சிட்டிங் இன் சைட் த ஹால் ஆஃப் த டேமரின் ட்ரீ அண்ட் இன் ஹிஸ் டிவைன் விஷன் the perumal as he appeared in the divideshan along with tayar will appear along with all the deeds that he took so hundred took so if rama did something in uh, tripulani that would appear before him as the action of lord rama himself along with how he appears so like this every single divideshan would manifest before the very eyes of namalvar but the point here i'm trying to make this mahendra giri is now said to be trikurudi now trik this mahendra giri is now described neela lohita manjishta patravarnaihi these are all the colors radha ji once rightly pointed out in if you read sundarakandam you will learn lot of sanskrit because color names will be there body part names will be there animal names will be there remember radha ji was exactly what's happening now okay neela lohita manjishta patravarna neela refers to which color children can try neela is what color kana yashika do you know blue or sutit yashika tell ma'am blue ma'am very good now try guessing what is lohita white ma'am aha lohita red color ma'am red color red color red color very nice red color manjishta manjishta means of the color of manjishta ah rachna ji yellow ma'am yellow and patra is green so these are the colors of what we will see So, Neela Lohita Manjishta Patra Varnaihi, Sita Sitaihi, Sita, Sita Mapi Cha Shukam, we saw, no? Spatika Mari Nibha Bha Samana Samana, in that shloka, Dor Bhirikta. Sita Asita, white and black. Okay, Sita means white, Asita means black. So, white and black colored. So, now all the colors have come in. Okay, so blue, red, green, yellow, white, black colored. Swabhava Vihitaihi. as it appears in their natural state as they appear in their natural states chitraihi wonderful or colorful dhatu bihi minerals and ores so samalankritam well decorated with so this is the first part of the anvaya well decorated with variegated colors of mineral ores this is how the mountain appeared this is the first line summary well decorated with multiple colors of the mineral ores can we move to the next part of the anvaya any doubts in this part kamarupi bihi sapparichchadaihi yaksha kinnara gandharvaihi kamarupi bihi so see everything is in tritya vibhakti which shows with 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 okay the mountain had all these things the mountain was appearing with all these things first it appeared with multiple colorful ores second what is it appearing with kama roopi bihi saparichchadaihi yaksha kinnara gandharvaihi along with kama roopi bihi those who are capable of taking multiple forms okay then saparichchadaihi with their retinues yaksha kinnara gandharvaihi with yakshas kinnaras and gandharvas okay so yakshas kinnaras and gandharvas who are capable of taking any form of their choice along with their retinues it appeared okay that is the second part meaning what is the meaning of red sorry here ma'am retinues retinues avu vasikra instruments adallama illa illa retinue retinue na avaru assistants la they are assistants the their uh, servants their um, uh, all the people with them okay then um idla vanda what is the difference between yaksha kinnara and gandharva do you all know who is a yaksha who is a kinnara who is a gandharva okay we'll discuss this in a little while devakalpaischa pannagaihi saha okay along with தேவகல்பைஷ்ட பன்னகைஹி along with ஆ தேவகல்பைஷ்ட யக்ஷ கிண்ணர கந்தர்வைஹி the தேவகல்பைஹி refers to the yaksha kinnara gandharvas they look like devas the yaksha kinnaras and gandharvas were looking like devas pannagaihi along with serpents okay so who were all there in the mountain what was there in the mountain so far we have seen the mountain had multiple color mineral ores the on the mountain there were yakshas kinnaras and gandharvas who look like devas who were accompanied by their retinue and then there were many serpents many snakes okay so now 
what is the difference between yaksha kinnara gandharva and naga naga as you all know is a serpent but what kind of a serpent it has a human face and a serpent body that is a naga okay it has a human face and a serpent body which is why if you go to the amachitrakatha illustration and see vasuki there was a child who was very fascinated by it vasuki had the face of a king okay with a nice crown and all and then he had these lovely naga decorations on his crown also and he looked very very handsome and then how is his body like a snake okay so naga is one who has the body of a uh, serpent but the face of a human who are yakshas yakshas are a class of living gods they report to somebody whom we know whom do they report to yakshas report to who can tell me kubera ah kubera perfect and then there is one more class of people who report to kubera they are of a lower order than yakshas they are called kinnaras kinnaraha kinnaraha are they men so they look like men deceptively they can take the form of men but they are actually spirits they are celestial spirits they are not evil spirits they are the there is they are cel celestial spirits who report to kubera they are his servants kinnaraha means those who um, again the retinue of kubera kinnaras um, have either a horse head and a human body or a human head and a horse body interchangeable this is their form okay horse head human body or human body uh, human head horse body so these are the kinnaras and then we have gandharvas who are the gandharvas celestial singers ma'am singers singers celestial musicians excellent name any of them you know tumbu tumburu ha ha hu hu these are also gandharva's names right who is the female kubera sons no ma'am kubera sons ha ha hu hu illa illa nala kubera nala kubera manigriva avalu gandharva vandan ava varva ama ava kubera retinue le vena varla they are also yakshas now but uh, uh, who are the female equivalents of the gandharvas they are not mentioned here apsaras okay the apsaras are not mentioned here but vidyadhara will be later mentioned so these people were there on the mountain who are their deva like yakshas kinnaras gandharvas along with their retinue and nagas were also there on the mountain so it was no ordinary mountain it was a mountain frequented by celestial beings which means there is a divine mountain only a divine mountain is capable of bearing the weight of hanuman for the act that he is about to do that is what valmiki is trying to convey by the description of the mountain like this okay next we move forward to the third part uh, rachna ji uh, ma'am bhiravishtam avikshnam uh, kama roopi bhi avishtam abhikshnam that will come in the last part of the anjana va no where did i say ha ah, okay abhikshna avishtam asti abhikshnam means constantly okay avishtam means occupied so it's constantly occupied by yakshas kinnaras gandharvas and nagas okay and serpents nagas so this is the meaning of um, abhikshnam and avishtam thank you for pointing out because i left it out the next part of the shloka will go for the anvaya now this is how the mountain appeared please keep in mind saha that sir is there without the visarka but it, when you do padacheda the word is saha saha means he he refers to hanuman why did the visarka go where did it go there is something called sandhi that happens in sandhi not only do words get letters get added but sometimes letters get removed also okay it is called elision sometimes or deletion right that happens sometimes because of the sandhi rule so the word here is saha although the word is written as sir please note saha refers to hanuman saha uh, tapivaraha tapivaraha means the greatest among the monkeys tasya girivarasya or girivaryasya of that great mountain tale at the feet of saptame vibhakti tatra there nagava tatra is added okay you don't have to take that you just have to take tatra at the feet of nagavarayute hrade tishtan nagaha iva abhavau nagavarayute hrade tishtan nagaha iva abhavau what does that mean nagavarayute hrade tishtan hrade means in a deep lake 
ஓகே நாகவர வர ஆயுத்தே அயுதா ரெஃபர்ஸ் டு கலெக்ஷன் கலெக்ஷன் ஆஃப் வாட் நாகவரா நாகவராக ஹூ ஆர் த நாகாஸ் நாகாஸ் ஹியர் டஸ் நாட் ஹேஸ் டூ மீனிங்ஸ் ஓகே இஃப் யூ கோ பை த திலகா கமெண்ட்ரி இட் ரெஃபர்ஸ் டு நாகா ஹேஸ் சர்பெட் ஓகே If you go by all the other commentaries, including Bhushanakara's and Shiromani commentary and all the other modern commentaries also, Naga has another meaning. Naga means elephant. Okay. So, in a deep pool, there will be many elephants for drinking water, no? And what kind of elephants? All of them are tall, fully grown adult elephants. They are magnificent looking. Among them, Naga ha iva ababhav. He looked like a... He looked like a Uh, fully grown elephant in a herd among a herd of elephants on that mountain okay so what does it mean man ha is it uh, madagaja no no not madagaja madagaja will later come there is a reference to madagaja later this is just nagavara nagavara means shreshtha the uh, supreme among the elephants so in the supreme among, among the among the herd of supreme elephants he shown like a supreme uh, he shown like a great elephant that is the meaning that we should take so essentially what the poet is trying to convey is the mountain itself is rich in mineral wealth and the mountain is frequented by many celestial beings so it is a very special mountain it is not an ordinary mountain in that special mountain how did hanuman appear hanuman appeared like a prime elephant among a herd of prime elephants which essentially means he appeared like a very powerful being who was ready to do something so he he shone brilliantly like this kind of an elephant so this is one meaning another meaning is like a shining a shining serpent among a bed of a lot of serpents among a lot of serpents he looked like a shining serpent okay so because of his dark color uh tilaka in tilaka commentary nagesh bhatta uh, takes the meaning as serpent serpent is dark in color so hanuman is dark in color when he crosses lanka right when he crosses to lanka so here he is compared to an elephant, a serpent because of his dark color according to tilaka commentary okay i hope the meaning is clear now to give the complete meaning of 5 6 and 7 the mountain shown with variegated uh, mineral well and with the celestial devas the uh, celestial gandharvas kinaras yakshas and nagas who inhabited it please tell us in their midst in their midst uh, in their midst hanuman shone like a chief ele- elephant among a crowd of elephants okay that is the meaning uh, raji ji question Um, ma'am here uh, starting from the fourth one hanuman has been compared to bull lion is there any deeper meaning ma'am apart from the uh, not really when deeper meanings do get pointed out by the commentators i will definitely share it uh, we can def- we can take one thing we can take the qualities of those comparisons everywhere rishabha sign of aggression alpha male you know that kind of look he is having again the pravridha kesari king of the forest that kind of look nagavarayute nagahaiva in a in a herd of um, you know fully grown elephants he looks like a supreme elephant so all these things are merely to show his complete um, what do you call i won't again say aggression complete mastery over what he is about to do he is an achiever set out who is setting out to achieve something he is not a wimpy person he is ready to achieve and he is fully active and you know on full flow okay uh, radha ji did you have something to add okay uh, i'm not able to see you suddenly no no Rashi... you are muted ah. radha ji is sorry sorry i didn't muted. i didn't realize i was ah. basically okay. superlative in ah. everything no superlative para means always para means param no so in mostly and also seventh vibhakti mostly used uh, mm-hmm. that means among so when that um, that vibhakti usage itself is when you say best among one of the best among so everywhere see uh, like best like lion as you said all what you have given but i felt all superlative degree so there is no second hmm. that's yes. all he is first right yes thank you raju thanks very much okay so this is the com- combined meaning of 5 6 and 7 is mm-hmm. that uh, clear for everyone no. can we move forward okay now we will go ma'am. to a... sorry ma'am rachna here ah tell me 
Ma'am, Tishtan is what is Tishtan means, uh, see, Shatra Pratya, one who is sitting or one who is standing or one who is appearing like that way. Hriday Tishtan. So, Tishtan goes with the lake, deep lake. The mountain is compared to a deep lake. What is sitting in the deep lake or standing in the deep lake? You can imagine a herd of elephants standing in the deep lake. So, Tishtan Nagaha, that Nagaha which is standing in the deep lake. So, the Tishtan goes with Nagaha in the Hrida. Clear, huh, Rachnaji? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay, so now we come to a very important shloka. This again uh, is a shloka where he offers a Mangala Shasana, uh, Mangala Charana. So, there are three. Uh, instances in Sundra Kandam where the Mangala Charanam is offered. The, this is called the Adi Mangalam of Sundra Kandam. This particular shloka, the eighth shloka of the first sarga is called the Adi Mangalam. And then there is a Madhyama Mangalam and an Anti Mangalam. So when we come to those also, I'll point out. It's like, uh, uh, so this basically is um, how he prays for auspicious things to happen. So this is Hanuman's prayer. Okay. So we'll learn the shloka and then we'll see the meaning. Sasurya, Sasurya Yama Hindra Yam, Sasurya Yama Hindra Yam, Pavana Yes Vayam Bhuve, Pavana Yes Vayam Bhuve, Bhute Bhyaschan Jalim Kritva, Bhute Bhyaschan Jalim Kritva, Chakara Gamani Matim. Chakara Gamani Matim. Sasurya Yama Hindra Yam. Pavana Yaswayam Bhuve. Sasurya Yama Hindra Yam. Pavana Yaswayam Bhuve. Bhute Bhyaschan Jalim Kritva. Chakara Gamani Matim. Bhute Bhyaschan Jalim Kritva. Chakara Gamani Matim. Easy Shloka together. Sasurya Yama Hindra Yam. Pavana Yaswayam Bhuve. Bhute Bhyaschan Jalim Kritva. Chakara Gamani Matim. Once more. Sasurya Yama Hindra Yam. Pavana Yaswayam Bhuve. Bhute Bhyaschan Jalim Kritva. Chakara Mani matim. Meaning. Any doubts in the chanting? Right? It's easy. Saha. Bhyascha, please, can you please repeat once, ma'am? Bhute Bhyascha. Another one whole word, ma'am. Bhute Bhyascha Anjalim Kritva. Okay. Please raise hand, Priyaji, because what happens is um, suddenly I'm talking and it gets cut. Huh? Okay. So we'll um, go into the meaning. Sir refers to again Saha. Who is this Saha? Hanuman. Okay, Hanuman. What is he saying? Suryaya Mahendraya Pavanaya Swayam Bhuve Bhutebhya Anjalim Kritva Gamane Matim Chakara. Okay, so this is what he did. This is not a shloka that he says, but this is what he is doing. His action is described by Valmiki. Saha Hanuman Suryaya. Two Surya, Suryaya, see all these words, Mahendraya, Pavanaya, Swayambhuve, Bhutebhya, all these are in fourth vibhakti. Okay, Chaturthi vibhakti is because he is doing Anjali. Okay, Anjali means prostration, prostrating. So whom is he prostrating to? He is prostrating to Surya Bhagavan. Again, let me ask why Surya Bhagavan? He is the Guru, no ma'am. Guru, correct. Mahendraya. Why Mahendra? Shiva. Mahindra? He is the father. Mahindra is not the father, yeah, of Hanuman. You know, so many voices are just cutting across. Let's just raise hands and I'll call you. Huh? Ah, Priya ji, please tell. She's been very disciplined and she raised her hand immediately. Indra, ma'am. Mahindra is Indra, God of the Devas. Yeah. Exactly, Devendra. No, why did he pray to Devendra? Sivagami Jitarima? Priyaji, anybody else? No, ma'am. I thought it was Shiva. Ah, no, no, not at all. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. He prayed to Indra because, remember, he is the one who practically gave him the name Hanuman. Why? 
his uh, jaw got hit by the vajrayudha of indra repentant indra what did he finally say may you be known as hanuman i bless you that you will no longer be affected by my vajrayudha right so the one who blessed him to be this person that he is today mahendra edukra okay pavanaya okay pavanaya to vayu bhagavan by his father swayambhu ve to swayambhu who is swayambhu who can guess ha ah, raji ji ಪಂಚಮಹಾಭೂತಾಸಿವಕಣ Okay, so basically to the elements of Shivaganas. Anjalim Kritva, having made his prostrations. Kamane Matim Chakara, he resolved to move. He resolved to go. Okay, so this is the action that he does. After praying to Surya, Indra, Vayu Bhagavan and Brahma and the elements, he decided in his mind to um, leap across the ocean. Okay, that is the summary meaning of the shloka. I'll move forward. Ha, Priya ji. I got a doubt, ma'am. Mahendra is what is given here, no, ma'am. So, is it... No, no, no. Mahendra is given here. Mahendra is given here. Oh, Apriya. Rama, yeah. Mari, Rama, 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 Mahendra. Mahendra, 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 Mahendra. No, no. If you say Mahendra, it will be Mahendra. Okay. Because Mahendra, 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 yeah ma'am ma'am this anjalim krutva can you please uh, explain he made his prostration anjali means bringing the hands together krutva anjali anjali okay. okay so he did his he did his namaste like this okay thank you okay uh is there no joshika are you following the class child yes ma'am no questions from you that's why i was wondering okay so now we will uh, move to the next shloka if the shloka is clear ಅಂಜಲಿ ಅಂಜಲಿ ಪವನಾತ್ಮಯೋನೇ 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 ದಕ್ಷಿಣೋ ದಕ್ಷಿಣ ಅಂಜಲಿ ಪವನಾತ್ಮಯೋನೇ ಗಂತು ದಕ್ಷಿಣೋ ದಕ್ಷಿಣ ಅಂಜಲಿ you okay. find lot of paatha veda in sundarakandam if you are finding you can ask me like this i can clarify okay 
once more we'll chant it together anjalim prangukha kurvan pavana yatma yonaye tato hi vavrudhe gantum dakshino dakshinam disham once more anjalim prangukha kurvan pavana yatma yonaye tato hi vavrudhe gantum dakshino dakshinam disham prangukha facing the east different directions have different names right prak direction of east prang mukha means mukha is facing the east so facing the east prang mukha atma yonaye atma yonaye is also in fourth vibhakti atma yonaye means atma comes from the ikaranta pulinga shaha atma yoni what does that mean here it refers to the one from whom he was born atma yoni means his father one from whom he was born his father who was he next word pavanaya so the word is prangmukaha atma yonaye pavanaya to vayu anjalim krutva or anjalim kurvan both are okay having prostrated or prostrating that is a difference in meaning dakshinaha dakshinam disham dakshinam disham refers to southern direction we all know no uttar dakshin dakshin refers to southern direction dakshina dakshinam disham means southern southern direction again look at the alankara here the same word dakshina is used two times okay dakshina dakshinam disham with different meanings when used along with disha dik Diksha, dakshinam disham means southern direction when used in the prathama vibhakti here is dakshinaha it means one who is dakshaha one who is capable okay so dakshinaha the capable one so here hanuman is referred as capable one dakshinaha so hanuman who is the capable one now towards the southern, southern direction gantum vavridhe gantum to move vavridhe began to grow in size vavridha vridh dato to grow began to grow in size so the meaning here is after making his prostration towards the east towards his father vayu he then looked towards the southern direction ready to travel the capable one grew in size okay that's the meaning is it clear okay so here there is a significance why did he have to turn east he could have directly just started going up the mountain just jumped off right why did he turn east there is a um, uh, bodhayana smriti which tells that uh, when we do any action good action we should face the um, uh, east and then move forward so that bodhayana smriti uh, he is a navyakarana pandita he is a master of the chaturdashi vidyas he obviously knows the smritis which tell him that this is how he should behave before doing something so important he should offer his obeisances to surya bhagavan to indra to brahma to his father and then he should look towards the east both of his father and then make the leap okay now dakshinaha dakshinam disham okay so he is now moving towards the southern direction dakshinaha the word used for him is the one who is capable of moving towards the southern direction is moving what is the act that he is performing he is growing in size okay can you and i grow in size if we decide i mean we can grow in size by eating a lot of food and putting on weight but we all do apart from that kind of growing in size can we grow in size in in a way like how hanuman did no so it's a demonstration of a particular siddhi right those of you who are familiar with the names of the eight siddhis you know made videos on it also what is the siddhi here karimana becoming anima very, animana becoming very small ha ah, radha ji i know you anima. राधाजी <laughs> the eight siddhis in case somebody is new to it and doesn't know i will just quickly tell anima mahima chaiva garima laghima tata 
ప్రాప్తి ప్రాకామ్య నిషిత్వం వర్షిత్వం చాష్ట సిద్ధయ సేది అమర కోశ ఓకే అనిమా మీన్స్ గ్రోయింగ్ వెరీ స్మాల్ మహిమా మీన్స్ గ్రోయింగ్ వెరీ బిగ్ అనిమా మహిమా చేయ ఘరిమా బికమింగ్ వెరీ హెవీ లఘిమా బికమింగ్ వెరీ లైట్ ప్రాప్తి ప్రాకామ్యం ఈషిత్వం ప్రాప్తి అటైనింగ్ ఎనిథింగ్ దట్ ఇస్ వాంటెడ్ చేంజింగ్ టు ఎనీ ఫార్మ్ దట్ హీ వాంట్స్ ఆల్సో ప్రాకామ్య అటైనింగ్ ఎనీ డిజైర్డ్ ఆబ్జెక్ట్స్ ఈషిత్వం రూలర్షిప్ ఓకే ఎస్టాబ్లిషింగ్ హిస్ డొమినియన్ ఓవర్ థింగ్స్ వశిత్వం ఎక్సర్టింగ్ కంట్రోల్ ఓవర్ అదర్ బీయింగ్స్ వశిత్వం ఆల్ దీస్ క్వాలిటీస్ హనుమాన్ విల్ బ్యూటిఫుల్లీ డిస్క్రైబ్ బ్యూటిఫుల్లీ ఎగ్జిబిట్ ఓకే సో హియర్ ఇట్ ఇస్ అన్ ఎగ్జాంపుల్ ఆఫ్ ద మహిమా సిద్ధి దట్ హీ ఇస్ షోయింగ్ నిశ్చయ సముద్ర ఇవ పర్వసు సముద్ర ఇవ పర్వసు టుగెదర్ లైన్ మరి ప్లవంగ ప్రవరై దృష్ట ప్లవనే కృత నిశ్చయ ప్లవంగ ప్రవరై దృష్ట ప్లవనే కృత నిశ్చయ ఐ రియలీ రిక్వెస్ట్ ఎవరీ వన్ టు బి ఆన్ మ్యూట్ ఐ యామ్ నాట్ ఈగల్ టు డు ద మ్యూట్ ఆల్ ఆప్షన్ ఫ్రమ్ దిస్ థింక్ ఐ థింక్ ఇట్స్ పార్తసార్థి సర్ ప్లీజ్ బి ఆన్ మ్యూట్ సర్ ఐ యామ్ నాట్ ఈగల్ టు సీ హిమ్ మ్యూట్ ఓకే ఐఎమ్ రిపీటింగ్ ప్లవంగ ప్రవరై దృష్ట ప్లవనే కృత నిశ్చయ ప్లవంగ ప్రవరై దృష్ట ప్లవనే కృత నిశ్చయ వవృధే రామ వృద్ధ్యర్థం వవృధే రామ వృద్ధ్యర్థం సముద్ర ఇవ పర్వసు సముద్ర ఇవ పర్వసు ఈజీ శ్లోక విల్ చాట్ ఇట్ టుగెదర్ ప్లవంగ ప్రవరై దృష్ట ప్లవనే కృత నిశ్చయ వవృధే రామ వృద్ధ్యర్థం సముద్ర ఇత ఇవ పర్వసు వన్స్ గుడ్ ప్లవంగ ప్రవరై దృష్ట ప్లవనే కృత నిశ్చయ వవృధే రామ వృద్ధ్యర్థం సముద్ర ఇవ పర్వసు నౌ మీనింగ్ అగైన్ లుక్ అట్ ద బ్యూటిఫుల్ వర్డ్స్ ఆర్ ద వర్డ్స్ విచ్ మీడియట్లీ షుడ్ క్యాప్చర్ యువర్ హార్ట్ ఎస్ డిడ్ బై వాజ్ రామ వృద్ధ్యర్థం వవృధే for the purpose of rama for his growth he grew in size why did hanuman grow in size not to see you and i if you have if he have some accomplishment we will show the accomplishment because we want to proudly tell others ah i know this i know this and we want to say i got first rank or i did this or my child got uh, this thing that thing we will always be proud of ourselves and we will show off our achievements but hanuman's purpose of doing something that he was capable of doing was only for rama rama vridhyartham vabrudhe he did this for rama's benefit for his for, that is the sign of bhakti when we do an action how should a bhakta be this is one again life lesson from sundara kanda how should a bhakta be any act that we do should be for bhagwan not for self interest when any act is done for self interest it is not bhagwan's act there is no karma yoga there, there. okay so vavridhe rama vridhyata now i'll get into the meaning plavanga pravarehi drishta plavanga refers to the here the monkeys are referred plavanga pravaraha refers to the collection of monkeys a troop of monkeys now the monkeys are assembled around him don't forget them they were there from the beginning they are all watching all these things okay so drishtaha amidst the seeing vanara sena or vanara troops it is not the full sena it was just a contingent plavane krutanischayaha the one who was determined to leap across the ocean there is anuprasha alankara plavanga pravarehi plavane both used one in the sense of a verb and one in the sense of a noun plavanga refers to the monkeys plavane refers to the act of leaping so plavane krita nischaya ha one or no plavane refers to the act of leaping even that is a noun so it was you know one who was determined to leap across so that person who is the krita nischaya here hanuman so hanuman here is referred to as krita nischaya ha one who has made up his mind to leap okay parvasu samudra iva రామ వృద్ధ్యర్థం వృధే 
ಪರ್ವಸು ಸಮುದ್ರ ಇವ ಪರ್ವ ರೆಫರ್ಸ್ ಟು ಫುಲ್ ಮೂನ್ ಡೇ ಆನ್ ದ ಫುಲ್ ಮೂನ್ ಡೇ ದಲ್ ಬಿ ಹೈ ಟೈಡ್ಸ್ ಸೊ ವಾಟ್ ವಿಲ್ ಹ್ಯಾಪನ್ ವೆನ್ ದೇರ್ ಆರ್ ಹೈ ಟೈಡ್ಸ್ ದಿ ಓಷನ್ಸ್ ವಾಟರ್ಸ್ ವಿಲ್ ರೈಸ್ ಅಪ್ ಸೊ ಲೈಕ್ ಹೌ ದಿ ಓಷನ್ ರೈಸಸ್ ಅಪ್ ಇನ್ ಹೈ ಟೈಡ್ ಹೀ ರೋಸ್ ಅಪ್ ರಾಮ ವೃದ್ಧಿಯರ್ಥಂ ವೃದ್ಧೆ ಹೀ ರೋಸ್ ಅಪ್ ಫಾರ್ ದ ಬೆನಿಫಿಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಲಾರ್ಡ್ ರಾಮ ಓಕೆ ಸೊ ಮೀನಿಂಗ್ ಇಸ್ he was being watched by all the monkey troops he had started to grow in size the one who was determined to leap across the ocean he grew in size like how the sea tides rise on the full moon day that is the meaning of this uh, stanza is it clear may i move forward any doubts okay if there aren't any we will move forward ma'am can you repeat the meaning sure 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 witnessed by the monkey troops uh hanuman who was determined to leap over the ocean grew in size for rama's welfare like how the oceans rise on high tides during full moon day okay next shloka ನಿಷ್ಪ್ರಮಾಣ ಶರೀರಸನ್ ನಿಷ್ಪ್ರಮಾಣ ಶರೀರಸನ್ ಲಿಲಂಗೈಶುರರ್ಣವಂ 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 ಅಗೇನ್ ಲಿಲಂಗೈಶುರರ್ಣವಂ ಲಿಲಂಗೈಶುರರ್ಣವಂ ಹೌ ಜಾಯಿನ್ ಸೆಂಟೆನ್ಸ್ ನಿಷ್ಪ್ರಮಾಣ ಶರೀರಸನ್ ಲಿಲಂಗೈಶುರರ್ಣವಂ ನಿಷ್ಪ್ರಮಾಣ ಶರೀರಸನ್ ಲಿಲಂಘೈಶುರರ್ಣವಂ ಬಾಹುಭ್ಯಾಂ ಪೀಡಯಾಸ ಬಾಹುಭ್ಯಾಂ ಪೀಡಯಾಸ ಚರಣಾಭ್ಯಾಂ ಚ ಪರ್ವತ ಚರಣಾಭ್ಯಾಂ ಚ ಪರ್ವತ ಬಾಹುಭ್ಯಾಂ ಪೀಡಯಾಸ 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 ಚರಣಾಭ್ಯಾಂ ಚ ಪರ್ವತ ಸೊ ಟುಗೆದರ್ ಶಿಲ್ ವಿ ಚಾನ್ ದಿಸ್ ಶ್ಲೋಕ ನಿಷ್ಪ್ರಮಾಣ ಶರೀರಸನ್ ಲಿಲಂಘೈಶುರರ್ಣವಂ ಅಗೆ ನಿಷ್ಪ್ರಮಾಣ ಶರೀರಸನ್ ಲಿಲಂಘೈಶುರರ್ಣವಂ ಬಾಹುಭ್ಯಾಂ ಪೀಡಯಾಸ ಚರಣಾಭ್ಯಾಂ ಚ ಪರ್ವತ ಎನಿ ಡೌಟ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ಲಿಲಂಘೇಶು ಹಾ ಡೌಟ್ ಲಿಲಂಗೈಶು ಓಕೆ <laughs> Okay, you can break okay. it there. Ah, Anjana Ji? Yeah, the last uh, word of the first line. That's what Joshika uh, said. I'll teach it. Yeah, in that also the last part of that word I want to know, ma'am. Okay, I'll teach it. Yeah. Okay, please be on your note. I'll teach it again part by part. Nishpramana sharirasan 
Vishpramana Sharira Sun. Without joining, we can check. Lilanga Yishura Navam. 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 Nishpramana Sharira Sun. Lilanga Yishura Navam. Nishpramana Sharira Sun. Lilanga Lilanga Yishura Navam. Lilanga Yishura Navam. Okay, clear? Okay, let's chant it together. See the meaning of this and close the class. Nish Pramana Sharira Sun Lilanga Yishura Navam Bahu Bhyam Pida Yama Sir Parvatam. Now he is grown in size. Remember, what does he do? He is now preparing the mountain for his takeoff. Okay, so how is he preparing the mountain for his takeoff? Aranavam Lilanga Yishuhu. He is referred now here as Arnavam Lilanga Ishuhu, one who is desirous of crossing the ocean. Lilangana means crossing. Langana, we say, or Samudra Langanam. Lilangana means one who is desirous of. Lilanga Ishuhu, one who is desirous of crossing the ocean. Nishpramana Shariraha. He, again, another word to refer to Hanuman. One with an immeasurable form. Aprameya, we know in Vishnu Sasnavamna, one who cannot be measured because there is no pramana for measuring him. There is no way. There is no way in which you can measure. So, one with an immeasurable size. Sh sharira is like that. Immeasurable size. He is that large. Nishpramana Sharira has son. Bitta, immeasurable size. Bahu Bhyam Charana Bhyam Cha Pirayama Sir. He pressed his hands and feet. Shoulders and feet. If you ask me, does a monkey have shoulders and feet? You should remember, Hanuman is not an ordinary monkey. He is a he is a divine monkey. He is Vanara. So he is the one who is a divine monkey. Kapivara. So he used both his upper um, limbs and his lower limbs. He pressed both against the mountain force, forcefully. Pidyamasa means pressed forcefully. So the meaning is one who is wishing to cross over the ocean, the one with the immeasurable size, namely Hanuman, uh, readied, uh, readied himself by pressing, the, uh, pressing his hands and feet on the mountain, firmly pressing down on the mountain. Now, next class, we will see the next shlokas, which will show the effect of his pressing on the mountain. Okay. Till now, is it clear? The meaning, is it clear? Any questions? If it is there, please ask. If not, I'll move forward to the concluding shlokas. Ha, who raised hand? Ha, Anjira ji, did you raise your hand? Or Swati ji, is your hand raised? No, ma'am, I didn't raise. Oh. It's, it's me, ma'am, Swati. Ah, tell me. Ask, please. I'm not able to hear you. Can you repeat the meaning of the sloka, ma'am? Ha, huh, yeah. Um, the one with the immeasurable size who is desirous of crossing over the ocean pressed his upper and lower limbs firmly on the mountain. Pressed his upper and lower limbs firmly on the mountain. Okay. We will now close with the concluding shlokas. Swasti Prajabhyak Paripala Yantam Nyayena Margena Mahi Mahisha Go Brahmane Bhyashubhamas Sunityam Loka Samasta Sukino Bhavantu Kale Varshati Varshatu Parjanyaha Prithivi Sasya Shalini Desho Yam Kshobharahito Brahmana Santu Nirbhaya Aputra Pautrinas Putrinas Santu Putrina Santu Pautrinaha Adhana Dhan Sadhana Santu Jeevantu Sharadam Shatam Charitam Raghunathasya Shatakoti Pravistaram Ekai Kamaksharam Proktam Mahapata Kadashanam Shrinvan Ramayanam Bhaktya Yapadam Padamevava Sayati Brahmanasthanam Brahmana Pujate Sada Ramaya Rama Bhadraya Ramachandraya Vedhase Raghunathaya Nathaya Sita ya pataye namaha, yen manganam sahasrakshe, sarva deva namaskrite, vritranashe samabhavat, 
तत्ते भवतु मंगलम एन मंगलम सुपर्णस्य विनता कल्पयत पुरा अमृतम प्रार्थयानस्य तत्ते भवतु मंगलम अमृतोत्पादने दैत्यान घृतो वज्रधरस्य यत अदितिर मंगलम ब्रादात तत्ते भवतु मंगलम प्रीन विक्रमान प्रक्रवतो विष्णो रमित तेजसह यदासीन मंगलम राम तत्ते भवतु मंगलम ऋतवस्वा सागरा द्वीपा वेदा लोकादिशे मंगलानि महाबाहु दिशंतु तव सर्वदा श्रीरामचंद्र श्रुत पारिजात समस्त कल्याण गुणाभिराम सीता मुखाबूर्व सचरी निरंतर मंगल मातनोत कायेन वाचा मनसेवा बुद्ध्यात्मना वा प्रकृते स्वभा कौमि यकल परस्म नारायणाए समर्पया श्री गुरुभ्यो नम हरि ओम सर्व कृष्णार्पण धन्यवाद